Oh. Oh, my dear. This is such an adventure today. Guys, 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 this is such an adventure for me uh, because we are doing this um, for me. I, I'm a baby on this. I'm a baby on this, but here we go. Guys, good day for everyone. I am excited to be here with all of you. And we're going to go live on Facebook for the first time. This is what I'm doing. Oh, Jesus. So I got a great invite today. I got a great invite today. And we are preparing. You know, while this comes up uh, live on Facebook, because we are still on the road, here we go. Oh, my dear. Here we are. Awesome. Here we are. Okay, family. This is your podcast, the Monica Go podcast. And I am excited today, as I always am, because my podcast is your podcast. And it's remember, guys, it's going back to basics. Going back to basics is that we don't forget where we come from, who we are, and who we are are from. We got a big daddy, a big God, and sometimes we forget these things. And today I have a great invite. I have a beautiful lady. Her name is Gail Burks. She is a superstar. She is a crazy superstar. She whooped everybody down in London when she opened up the 100 Successful Women in Business. And I just hooked with this woman. She's a rock star on, on that pulpit. But I know that she's going to talk about a lot of things from you to you about her. And we're going to talk about the nitty gritty today. We're going to talk about the things that she has to go through and to take her where she's at today. Miss Gail, hug you in the distance, my dear. Hello, my dear. How are you? This platform is all yours, girl. Hello, Pastor Monica, my sister, my sister. It is so good to be reunited with you again. Uh, and thank you. Thank you so much for having me on your platform. I am so excited to be here with you. Uh, you know, this, this has been a journey. And I think that the universe, or better yet, the elders in the universe, give us people that help us, that teach us. And I receive it, I receive you. And, and thank you so much for being in my universe. You know, to, to your listeners out here, I'm hoping that I can give you some nuggets. And when it comes to from whence I've come, and I, I want you to understand that I'm still there. I'm still on that journey. And whence I've come was just yesterday. and. When I started this journey, it was probably the biggest secret that I'd ever kept. The only other person that knew about it or the only other entity that knew about it was the spirit above and the elders who guided me on this journey. And, and I had some in-depth talks with them all. Mm -hmm. And the, the message that I got before I pulled the plug and stepped out was, be still and know that we will tell you when it is time. Hmm. Wow. So, so stay humble. And, and that's what kept me humble. And you have to be humble in this journey because it does have some dips in it. But when the elders and the lead spirit said to me, go, I moved. I moved. And, and when did you move? What, what, what was happening in your life? Oh gosh. That was in a place that, that you were, you couldn't do it. There was nothing that was able to help you that you were completely paused that you yeah. think you thought that life was not with you. If life was against you, even God oh, was gosh. against you. For, oh gosh. Um, in 1990, that was literally the year. Uh, I was in, and if you don't mind me just being totally transparent, um, I was in a horrible marriage. Uh, I was, I was in a horrible, horrible work situation where I had, um, I had a husband at home at the time who resented everything about me. 
and reminded me of it every day. So you can understand how debilitating that was. I would go to work. I had a boss who didn't like minorities, was not too crazy about women. And if you were an intelligent woman who happened to be a minority, that's a third strike. Right. And then yeah. I was a and then I was an achiever. I was a peak performance achiever within the organization. So I was outperforming my counterparts of other ethnicities and genders. So as opposed to being celebrated, I was chastised. And so I was getting it from all ends. Wow. I had no support other than the spirits above and the elders. That's what kept me going. Good. How, how did you fight that? How, how, was you, how were you able to get out of that place that you said, God, here I am. This is not fair. I can't do this anymore. I didn't have a pity party for one. Oh, could you repeat that again, please? I did not have a pity party. I never asked myself, why is this happening? I, I asked myself, spirit, what is this lesson that you're teaching? I know you're preparing me for something great. And you're telling me, and I'm listening, you're telling me that there is a toughness that I need to have for this next chapter that you are preparing me to walk into. And, and they were, the elders and my lead spirit were preparing me for this, this next chapter, which was entrepreneurship. And there were some other carrots that, the, that they had waiting for me. So that's how I kept my sanity. Now, I'm not going to tell you it did not affect my health. And when it started to affect my health, it was because I took my eyes off of the prize. Oh, I see. When I, I see. put my eyes back on the prize, my health came back in line. My focus was in line and I was able to listen and hear. Hmm, I love it. I love it. And when that message came through to move, I heard it. I had no fear at that point and, and, and never looked back because I knew who was carrying me and the footprints in the sand were there. Now, granted, in that same year that I walked away from my job, and it was a job, literally that entire department, literally the entire department that I worked in fell apart. They had to restructure it because I was the only producer in that department. They weren't producing anymore. Also within that same year, I filed for divorce and brought peace wow. to my house. Wow, that is a hard thing. There's so many things going through. How, how long was that marriage? The marriage was nine and a half years. Nine and a half years. And when I realized that I was not put on this earth to be miserable, nor did I want my daughter to see how a relationship should not be, I made the decision to move forward without him. And I did. I raised my daughter alone. Uh, amid other side adversities. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the survivor of domestic violence. Mm, I am a domestic wow. violence survivor where I had a, an ex-spouse who decided that I had made a mistake leaving him. And he mm. tried to take my wow. life and I had to fight for my life. And the police arrested me. What? <laughs> because you because were I drew blood. I drew blood. It was a you or me at that point. And I decided I was not going out. I drew blood. So the, the law said that whoever draws blood goes to jail. And I went to jail for 24 hours and had to do 12 weeks of anger management. 
I can laugh about defending. it now, but it wasn't funny then. Um, but it did not break me. It made me stronger. <laughs> that is so true. Things that we go through that are so hard in our lives, things try to break you. Yes. They try to break you, but really they make you stronger. That's why you're a hard cookie. I love it. This testimony is so beautiful. You know that how many women that will be seeing this replay or are seeing this at this moment and will be listening to this podcast, they will be identified. I'm going through a man that's hitting me, that I'm in a terrible situation. This is These people don't value me. I, I heard this saying, and I love it the way that they say it in Spanish, but it doesn't rhyme in English, but it says, you go where you are celebrated and yeah. loved. Yeah. You don't go to a place where you kind of are like, oh, oh, there she comes. No, 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 no. You got, you have to hang out with the people that are celebrating you yeah. for who you are and what you're doing. And what was the turnaround from all of that? You were in jail. A man tried to kill you. God, what was the turnaround? Well, the turnaround was a wake up call for family and close friends who either did not know or did not believe that this man could be as wicked as he was. And at, because I never put my business out in the street and those that I tried to share with primarily family were like, well, well, no, he could, no, no, no. He couldn't do that. He couldn't do that to you. And I'm like, uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> and um, so uh, I think it was a wake up call for people uh, who were embarrassed that they were not as supportive. One of the things that I learned through all of those difficult episodes in, in my journey was that there were other women and men who had gone through similar situations and they embraced me and they lifted me up oh, through wow, it. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Through it. And, and Don't it you... was, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 you're fine. But in those moments when you're, when you're alone, basically you really find out who are yeah. your core people, who are your friends, yeah. the ones that really yeah. love you for who you are. Right, right, right. And believe it or not, um, this is how the spirit protects you and how you know that you are a child of God. When I, when, when they took me in and they processed me, one of my pastors who was, who was, he and his wife were personal friends of mine and they had tried to help prior to that incident. He called, my neighbor called him. He in turn called one of his pastoral colleagues who happened to have been a corrections officer in the same processing center where they took me. He came and sat with me with his Bible. They called me out of the holding area and he literally sat with me, talked to me, prayed with me. And <laughs> the next morning, another pastor from my church came down and spoke in my behalf. I had three pastors come to help me during this time. I mean, it, it was amazing. And at that point, I knew that I had the, the, the cloak of protection over me. Wow. So I had beautiful. the cloak of protection over me. And, and, and that's when I knew that 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 I was met for something greater. <laughs> and, and I and I have to tell you, number one, um, my ex-spouse never bothered me again. <laughs> he told, he proceeded to tell everybody that I beat him up um, and he had to go to the hospital, but he never told anybody why. And wow. that that's for him to live with. And uh but exactly. 
it it made me it let me see who was my village and 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 I'll stay on that village for a minute as well because as we grow professionally as we grow personally uh when I became an entrepreneur the people that I thought were part of my internal village my close village faded away and a new village formed mm. and 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 I, I want people to understand that sometimes and you mentioned it going to somebody else's village to try to be a part of it and what have you sometimes that is not what you need to do um, because as entrepreneurs, we tend to kind of write our own stories. And sometimes you have to create and build your own village. And that's Most what I ended up having to do. My family definitely. is not necessarily bloodline family at this point in my life. My business. I, I, I'm with you on that one. I understand yeah. you so much yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it it's important to know and 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 my family is the diaspora of the world. Hmm. Wow. So so important. know that that it is not just who shares that bloodline with you. Uh and and there are probably fewer people with that bloodline in my village at this point. And the same holds true for your business. Um, you know, that 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 whole saying of, and I'm, I know I'm not quoting it correctly, but you know, the, the, the seven people that sit in your most inner circle are the ones that influence your success and wealth. I know that's that, not how it goes, but that's how it sounds for me. Exactly. Well, they will push you to go into higher places because they know the potential and exactly. they really honor you for who you are, for what you do. And they see things that you don't even see sometimes of yourself. Yes. 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 So it's a beautiful thing. So yeah. how did you, how did these people helped you push you into this new place that you're on right now? Because she's telling us all about her dark moments, but <laughs> now she's not in that dark moment because she didn't oh. put a, a pity party over herself, but she gave herself the opportunity to believe, to see God move in her life. Now, what are you doing, Miss Gail? Tell me about. Oh my gosh! Gail. She goes, Monica. I'm not doctor. I'm Gail Hurts. I'm just Gail. You know, I, <laughs> when 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 I talk to people, you know, I always know when they have read my LinkedIn page. <laughs> Oh, they read my bio. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I, I I'm an oxymoron. Um, I love peak performance because it lets me live the life that I want to lead. It lets me set the example for those who are coming beside me, behind me, and it reassures those in front of me that I was listening. But I don't read the press releases. I, I, I don't. And, and so what I do professionally is what I do. It's not so much who I am and, and who I am is just loving being Maja, which is Swahili for female elder to my grandkids. Um, Swahili to your female elders. I'm a the, the Swahili for female elder. Yes. What is the word again? Maja, M-A-J-A, -A, Maja. Maja, very well, in Swahili, okay. And so they can inheritance? call, huh? Is that your heritage? No, I just didn't want to be called grandma. <laughs> <laughs> now my grandson is the only one, and, and now my granddaughter, they're the only ones on occasion, if they just don't feel like saying Maja, they can call me grandma. They, but it ends up it, it ends up coming out Gramaja. So I'll Grimaja. take it. I'll take it. Just call me. 
So where but, are you at right now, Miss Gail? Where are you at right now? Where are oh you gosh. going? What are you doing? I am in such a great place right now. Um, this year, I will be 63 years old. Wow. And, and I am totally, totally set in a happy way in my skin. And, and I know who I am. And, and folks, I want to tell you, it, it does take a minute for you to truly appreciate the person that you have become. And, and, and that is where I am. I am in such an extraordinarily happy space right now. Very um, well. I have a beautiful husband who just loves me to life. And, and um we work together, we play together, we travel together. You got to meet him, um, you know, and on a business side. Wasn't he with you in London? I saw, was. I met him. If you saw this man standing in the background and all he could do was smile like this, that was my husband. <laughs> I met him. He was your, he was your favorite fan. He right was. There when you were, yeah, when you were talking, he was like, I, ah, looking at you in London. I, and I said, oh my God, this man loves this woman. How beautiful he is, is that? He is just a deer. He is a, he is my protector. So, so I'm in a good space personally, health wise. Um, you know, I'm a double cancer survivor and I'm 13 years cancer free and counting. Uh, so health wise, I'm in good shape. So folks know, and, 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 and the stress, nothing matters. If it doesn't get done, it doesn't get done. And we pray that there is a tomorrow. Business-wise, it, it could never, well, yeah, it can be better, but it is awesome. People are receiving the business, the services. We are really looking to go global in the services that we offer, the coaching, the what training. What are you offering so they can know what, they're, what you're doing? What is your coaching? What is your training? Where yeah. could they find you? We, you can go to www.cma-that's the dash, ent.com. And, and my company is called CMA Enterprise Incorporated. And we provide performance and process improvement, consulting, advisory services, and training. I'm what they call a Lean Six Sigma master black belt. So I'm a specialist in building profitability models for individuals and organizations. Where do you want to go? How do you want to get there? How do we streamline the prof but the processes to get there? And when we get there, how do we stay there and continue moving to the next level? That's Let me ask what you a I question, do. Miguel, so, so when they don't understand what want to go somewhere and you're consulting them and if they don't understand you just hit them with a black belt move yaka yaka wah what i do That's what I uh, no it's not karate it's not karate it's what we do is we work with you to create your own toolbox of of strategy <laughs> to get you where you want to go but that is a good, that is a good analogy. We make you stronger. You we make you confident. Exactly. Because some people are so hard headed that they want to go to another place, to another level, but they don't want to leave their old habits. And if you stick with your old habits, you're not going to go nowhere. Is that correct or not? Ms. Exactly. If you're looking to achieve different results, you can't do it with the same strategy. You've got to change your strategy. You've got to step. You've got to be comfortable in the uncomfortable. You've got to be continuously dissatisfied in a good way, dissatisfied. And, and that is how I live my business life. And, you know, people tell me all the time, oh, you're kind of tough. No. Being out here is no joke. You know this as an entrepreneur and businesswoman. Um, it, it is no joke out here. The one thing I say no, to no. my sisters in business, 
my sisters of all genres and ethnicities, colors, age, you never have to stop being a woman. My dad gave me the that best advice and so did my mom. And my dad said, you gotta bring more to the table than just a smile. And then he put his paper back up and kept reading the Sunday paper. And my sisters and I all just kind of looked at each other and said, what just happened here? But that advice <laughs> never left us. And my mother said, never go outside in public without your lipstick. Always have exactly. your lipstick on so you can see what I got on today. My mother wore bright your red lipstick. Mom, your mom is my type of girl. Never go yeah. out without your lipstick, girl. <laughs> yep. No matter what you got on, if you got your baseball cap on and your and your your dungarees, you better have your lipstick on. Okay, that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. You see, I got short hair, so I always wear the long earrings so I can move my hair. I love it, Miss Gail. Miss Gail, tell me something. Tell the people something. Give them the advice of the world because you're going to give me all of your handles, and the handles they're going to be able to contact you. And we have to we have to run to each other. We have to get together. Um, I just love to be able to get together with powerful women that are doing something for someone else, bringing them love, peace, exaggeration of themselves, because God is an exaggerated God, and we need to be as excellent as he is, at least try to. Yes. So Ms. Gail, give us that that inspirational quote, listening to this woman that has battled cancer, listening to this woman that was in jail because this guy was about to kill her. And this woman that is a re that is resilient, crazy enough to believe in God, and that is right now where she's at. I am so, so thrilled to have you today. Would you close out with something really cool for our people? Oh, gosh. Don't be afraid to tell people your business, just like I did today. Be transparent because people buy people before they buy your service. Doctor, uh, Professor, Mo Professor, Pastor Monica and I connected because we bought each other. So be transparent as to who you are. Do you be you and when you do your light will shine on others and they will come wow wow don't be afraid to be you that just that just went through me like a like a like fresh water my deal gail gail you are a beautiful woman I hug you from the distance and I hope that my God, the one that I serve, the one that you that you pronounce, that we could get together and do things together for women all around the world. I am thankful with uh, the 100 successful women in business that put us together yeah. and yeah. that we were able to share our moments in London and that I know it's only the beginning of the purpose of God in our lives. So my dear friends from the Monica Go podcast and today my first live on Facebook, oh dear Jesus, because she inspired me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. We're going to be on her podcast. What's your podcast? We're going to do something close to the month of May or June, I, yes. Mar, May, or I don't know. We're yes. going to be on her podcast. What's your podcast name? It's called Open Mic with Gail Burks. And With so Gail look Burks. for the second Thursday in May at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I plan to have continue this conversation, but you're going to be the one interviewed at that point. And I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> you're a doll. And I'm so glad and so honored to have you here today. And remember, my precious people around the world, that God loves us and you need to give it a go because God already gave a go for you. So mwah, blessings to all, wherever you are, I'll see you then. How do you mm -hmm. close the Facebook Live? I don't even know. Don't know.